You might be familiar with residual neural networks, an influential deep learning architecture that made heavy use of skip connections. However, if you read the paper thoroughly, you must have seen lots of mention of another type of network called highway network. These networks, although not much in use nowadays, use the same core idea of skip connections as the residual neural network to train deeper networks. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at this architecture, the result from the paper Highway Network, and the subsequent larger paper titled Training Very Deep Networks. All of the links are in the description. At the time, it was fairly difficult to train networks with more than 20 layers. Even though they had more capacity, these networks didn't even overfit the data. It was just very difficult to train them. The residual neural network was tackling this problem by reframing it as a residual problem. The architecture was a modified VGG network with residual connection in between layers. These mini information highways are created so that the output of a layer can skip a later section of the network if needs be. By the way, if you're interested, do check out my full tutorial on the ResNet architecture. I even have a PyTorch walkthrough. The idea of having side paths in which information can flow seemed to be crucial, but it isn't a new concept. The long short-term memory cell had this type of architecture already created, which allowed it to have information move for sequential data. The highway network architecture is heavily inspired by LSTM. It was also made way back in the days by the legendary Jürgen Schmidhuber, which is also the author of highway networks. The resulting architecture from these currents of idea is a very simple concept of highways of information that are learnable within a network. This is a core difference between the ResNet architecture. In the ResNet case, the skip connection is always fully open and there is no transform gate that modulates the output of a transformation. The network can be any type, fully connected, convolutional, or recurrent. In the paper, the results are for convolutional highway networks since they were doing mostly computer vision tasks. The derivation of how the authors went from a plane network to a highway network is fairly straightforward. Starting from the function h, which take as input x and weights, the other add a transform and a carry operation to the formula. This new formula will be able to modify the output to either make use of a learnable transformation or some other transformation of x. They then define c, the carry, as being 1 minus the transform. Both the transform t and the carry c share the same weights since c is 1 minus t. Furthermore, they define t as being this, this formula, which will be bounded between 0 and 1 since the sigmoid. This means that at t equals 0, the input is passing an impeded, and at t equal 1, the signal is completely transformed to convolution. In between, it's a mix of both. The training procedure here is the same as one would use for training a plane network. The function t is using a sigmoid to bind itself between 0 and 1, while the rest of the network use ReLU or tan h. The bias was in a slice between minus 3 or 1 to have a tendency to carry the input instead of transforming at the start. Finally, the number of layers was modulated throughout the experiment to quantify the performance of the architecture. The highway networks were trained in two main datasets, MNIST, which is a simple 10-class dataset with 7,000 images, and Cypher with 10 or 100 class of 60,000 images. In the first experiment, the author decided to compare between a plane network, so regular VGG type of network, and their convolution highway architecture. They modulated the depth of both types of network from 10 to 100 while training them on the MNIST dataset. As we see on the left, the 100 layer plane network is having a hard time optimizing its performance and is way less performant than any other layer depth. While on the right, the highway network with 100 layers is more performant than its plane counterpart and has similar result to its other layer depth. As we can see on the right, the optimal network depth for the MNIST seems to be 10 layers, but the 50 layers highway network still exhibits some very good performance. We'll see afterward how is it the case. The other did a second sanity check with the MNIST dataset. The two networks they were testing against were the state of the art at the time, which was the deeply supervised net and the max out network. From their experiment, they saw that they achieved similar performance to the two networks on a simple MNIST benchmark, interestingly with way fewer parameters. The other continued to compare the network against other. One of the deepest architecture at the time was the FitNet architecture, which used a teacher-student training scheme. They modulated their highway network from 11 layer to 32 and checked their performance on the Cypher 10 benchmark. 
As we can see, the highway uh, B, uh, which matched the fitnet B at 19 layers, was much better than the fitnet of similar size. The next experiment was to compare the highway networks against the state-of-the-art network on Cypher 10 and 100. The main network compared here were MaxOut, DSM, and network -to network The best-trained highway network gave results comparable to the current state-of-the-art and even achieved a new height at Cypher 100. Interestingly, the ResNet, which has a similar architecture, was able to reach greater results with its 100-layer variant. The last experiment of interest was an analysis of an, the activation pattern of the best 50-layer highway network they trained. Here we can see various view of the activation of the 50 layers highway network on the MNIST and on the Cypher 100. Let's walk through the structure of these graphs as they have very important insight into the internal behavior of the network. If we zoom into one of the graph, we have two axes, the layer depth on the Y and the block number on the X for a given layer. Looking at the network on the right, the activation of each highway block will be mapped out in one of the layers. The color of each dot will reflect the various ways a given block in a given layer is activated. Okay, let's take a look at what each of the four graphs means now. We have the transform gate bias, which is, a, uh, which is the final bias result for each of the block. We have the two middle graph, which have the output of the transform gate for all training sample on average and from a random training sample. Finally, we have the output of the whole block for a random training sample. In a nutshell, for MNIST, we can see that uh, most of the bias are decreasing even further than the start of the training procedure since it starts at the minus 2. The Sapphire 100 data show us a few extra things. That the early gates are usually more active. That there is a sparse activation per sample. The transform gate bias increase for Cypher with depth, meaning that the early layers are way more selective. And finally, the mean transform gate output per class is different across classes and when compared to the main transform gate for the whole training sample. So, as you can see more clearly here for MNIST, this is different, and here for Cypher. For a given random element across blocks, it's also pretty clear that the output from subsequent block stay mostly constant. Information therefore is passed across layer in this highway until it hit the final classification layer. These graphs were pretty information packed, but in a nutshell, the network seems to self-regulate how to fill up its capacity. The last experiment we'll take a look at is an ablation study they did on their highway networks in order to see which of the layer was actually important. How they did the ablation is by setting a transform gate to zero, which means that it only do a carry at a specific layer. So as we can see over here, only carry behavior from the previous layer output is available. This experiment was conducted for network train on MNIST and on Cypher 100. And as we see here, 60% of the later layers are just not contributing at all for the MNIST and are simply forwarding the information. This means that the network doesn't have to be as big as 50 layer network for MNIST, which matched the result we've seen previously. Still, the performance is as good as a 10 layer uh, network since it actually kind of behaves like a 10 layer network. For Cypher 100, the result is much more nuanced, where most of the layers are important, especially the earliest one. This gives us a view that with this type of architecture, the network can figure out how much representation power it needs, uh, just like the residual neural network. And that was Highway Network in a nutshell. I hope that this tutorial was useful. If you have any questions, comments, don't hesitate to post them down below. And see you all next week.